What's going on everybody, LK here, and today uh, a little bit more Street Fighter. So I've been grinding Honda, which I know is very shocking to a lot of people, but uh, I've gotten my Honda up to a really high rank. I'm like diamond rank, probably gonna push for master before I take a break from the game. So this is both going to be a how to play Honda if you're interested in sumo, but also how to beat Honda because a lot of people think he's really, really strong. I think so too. So this will help you both play as him, but also play against him. So first we got to talk about Honda's general game plan. So he is a charge character. So that means you have to be holding down back and back a lot to charge a couple of his special moves. But these two special moves are actually like really powerful. So one is the headbutt. This is going to be very important for your game plan in just period, honestly. <laughs> this move is really, really, really important to know how to use well. And the other one is going to be the sumo slam. So your goal with him is to get a small life lean essentially, and then just hold it with defensive mid-range play. After I get a couple of these or whatever, once I have the life lead, I'll just sit, sit, use headbutts, and try to just bully them into the corner while forcing them to try to overextend to hit you, countering them, and then continuing your offense. So first, I'm gonna take a look at his buttons overall really quick, and then we're going to talk about his neutral game, what buttons should you press where, etc. So first is gonna be his job. This is his job, what his job looks like. You basically use this mostly in pressure. This is a standing medium punch. It's one of his most important buttons. It's not a fast button, but very importantly, it is plus on block. So if you've been playing a bunch, you will know that most moves in this game don't have advantage on block without you using a resource so just having one that just having one is a privilege in this game then he has standing heavy punch this is your reversal punish this is your whiff punish button is it's also a decent preemptive move because it hits really really far yes because crouching jab which same type of thing it's not really low compared to his crouching light kick and standing jab his crouching jab and his standing light kick are both four frames. So these are like the buttons that you mash, but really the main one you mash is the crouching jab because it's bigger. So like this is, these will whiff where your crouching jab will hit. Then you have his crouching medium bunch. This button is pretty important too. It's a good amount faster than his standing medium bunch at a uh, eight frames instead of 10. So because of this, you can use it in spots to like counter poke people. Then you have his crouching heavy punch. So this move is a little underrated. I want to say it's minus three. So it's really safe on block from like a really, really far range. Like a lot of his buttons, they advance as well. So like this advances, this advances, and it's not special cancelable normally, but if you power up, you have a nice safe counter poke that you can cancel into hands, which is really nice. So kicks, you don't actually use that much with him. Uh, I find myself mainly using crouching leg kick and only in offense, but there's a stand leg kick. Uh, we looked at it before. It is also his fastest move, but it doesn't have anywhere near as much range as his crouching jab. So I don't really press it that much. His crouching medium kick is pretty decent. So his crouching medium punch is faster. So I find myself using it a lot more. So the main times I find myself using the crouching medium kick is out of drive rush. His stand medium kick though is decently useful. It's another advancing normal. It's not fast, but it's safe. You have stand roundhouse. So apparently this is supposed to be like a situational anti-air. I don't really use it a lot. Uh, this is mostly a combo tool from my experience. And last we have his crouching roundhouse. So this is your typical sweep. It's minus 10 on block, so it's not really safe. Uh, I've seen people use this in combos in certain spots, but I haven't really been using it. So I don't really know what to tell you for this one. So then for his command normals and unique attacks unique to him. So first we have the target combo. So the main time I use the target combo is usually from like drive rush stuff, uh, drive rush style mix ups. For example, if I hit them overhead, I would follow up with the target combo. The target combo is not safe. So you do need to cancel into something. But if you have your charge, you can cancel on the headbutt. So it's not a big deal. Then you have a stand medium punch into down forward heavy kick. So this move, down forward heavy kick, is its own unique normal. So it's pretty fast at a uh, 22 frames overhead, minus three on block. So pretty safe. Again, on a hit, you would have advantage here, but he also can do it off stand medium punch. So he can do this and chain into it. We need to stay on the down forward heavy kick and the medium punch into down forward heavy kick for a little bit. So because of how slow this is, 
you can cancel it into special moves. So you could do like this, for example, or more notably, and we'll revisit this, of course, when we actually get to offense, you can cancel it into Kamangram. So that means off your good poke that's plus, you can cancel it into whatever. And we have his forward heavy kick. So this move is minus five. So if you don't use it at the right spot, people can punish you, but it's a pretty useful normal. It advances again, like a lot of his other stuff. And it's a low, so if you find people walking away from you too much, you could use this and it hits way further than his crouching medium kick. Then jump attack. So here's his jump light kick. I don't really find myself using this button that much. Uh, surprisingly, despite the way it looks, it is a little difficult to get this to cross up. It takes a little timing. Uh, then we have to jump medium kick. So again, this is just another button I don't really use very much. Uh, it also doesn't change when you neutral jump. So something that was kind of weird for me playing Street Fighter that I forgot is uh, sometimes when you neutral jump, you'll have a different normal than when you like back jump or forward jump. Uh, so here's his jump roundhouse kick. Despite the way it looks, I could not see this crossing up. This is mainly a jump in. Then jump heavy punch. We're going to opposite order just because just for fun. Forward jump heavy punch and back jump heavy punch. His heavy punch actually changes when you do a neutral jump. So you can actually steer it. So here it is. And then you can steer it forward or you can steer it back. This is really useful actually. So what you can use this for is instead of doing what people would typically do where they might like jump over the fireball. Instead, you could choose to slowly drift towards or away from your opponent, which most people can't do. Then we have jumping medium punch and jump light punch. Uh, jump light munch I mostly use for when somebody is really really close to me and jumping over Let's say this type of example here. We'll have Ryu just casually jump over So this could be kind of hard to hit with like typical anti-airs because he's going over you, right? You can use jump light punch to just stuff that Then last is he has another unique air normal which is this full body splash that you'd use with a jump down medium kick you have to be jumping forward to do this. It's really active and a really easy cross-up tool. Then special move. So we have headbutt. This is done by charging back and then pressing forward and a button. This is the move of all time. This is the move you're gonna be using a ton. Uh, we'll be talking about this move when I talk about each phase of the game, right? So neutral, offense, defense. The main difference between the three is that the light one is kind of slow and it doesn't go very far. And slow, not even in that the startup is slow because it actually starts up really quickly. It's just that he travels slowly, specifically it's like this. Um, the medium one goes almost full screen, but not quite. They stop right in front of you. The head, heavy one goes full screen. It's the slowest of the three. The EX one has armor and it's actually quite fast. So Ryu's doing this pressure on me, right? So here, what I'll do is I'll block one and I'll tank the other one with the armor. Then we have Sumo Slam. So this is done by charging down and pressing up and a kick. You can also steer this. Similarly to the headbutt, the difference is in the directions. That's light. That's medium. And that's heavy. And again, you can steer these the way that you want. So you could have like a neutral one, you could have one that lunges forward, and you could have one that doesn't go very far if you want. A uh, really nice thing is that this is plus on block. If they block it crouching, you're plus two. If they block it standing, you're plus one. So they have to respond to this. They can't just take this or else they're giving you free plus frames, which is extremely useful. Then we have his 100 hand slap. So it is no longer a mashy move. It used to be like uh, Chun-Li's lightning legs and 100 hand slap. You have to press the buttons really quickly to do it. Now it's just quarter circle motion. So here are his light hands. So these are minus three, very safe, pretty good range. The main thing I find myself using this for outside of the power up is against characters that are really good at playing this game where they'll just kind of like wait for you to whiff something because Honda's walk speed is not that fast walking backwards. He's pretty fast walking forwards, but not so fast backwards. So when they're doing this uh, Street Fighter little shimmy movement, this has a nice long active hitbox that you could just kind of stick out. The medium ones and heavy ones are both unsafe, so I find myself primarily using them for combos only. Then you have Ochio Thoro, which is his command grab. Uh, it's a command grab. <laughs> it's not that much to say. It's an untackable throw. That's if you whiff, you die, but you could use this in a lot of spots. Like we mentioned before, the main times you'll be using this is off like car canceling it. 
So canceling your down forward kick into this move is gonna be a really important part of your game, but also just using the move in general, especially if they're back to the wall or if they can die from the throne because it does more damage than a normal throne. Then you have sumo steps. So this move is pretty new. You use this a lot in combos, but use the EX one also for pressure because the EX one is plus two where the normal one is minus three. So you use the normal ones in combos, you use the EX one for pressure. So a lot of people are like, what is this clap for? So the clap kills projectiles. So the clap is basically there to just kill projectiles, which is pretty nice. So that means there are cases where you won't have to use like system mechanics, you won't have to jump or anything. And then last is Sumo Spirit. So what what is this uh, Warrior of the Sun doing? So when you have this power up, it does two things. It buffs your 100 hand slap on hit, and it also makes things that are not special cancelable normally special cancelable. Uh, we just talked about the clap, right? So this move is not normally special cancelable, but if I have the power up, it is now special cancelable. Or we talked about crouching heavy punch. This move is not special cancelable normally, but with the power up, now it's special cancelable. But then you also have to talk about hit. So this is a, an example combo, but let's say you did something like this. This is just like two crouching jabs in the hands. You're only at plus two, so you can't, I mean, you get offense, of course, but you can't like follow up with uh, any type of knockdown or a longer combo. But with this power up, you'll note that you're now plus four. So you get combos you don't normally have access to. Then for supers, we have three we gotta look at. So we have this, this is level one. It's a double quarter circle forward and punch. It is invul, so you have to remember that he doesn't actually have a reversal. The EX headbutt has armor, so you can get grabbed out of it and stuff. And people can break the armor with armor moves. So the level one is both a combo tool, but also it's invincible. So this input is kind of cursed because you have to be charging and then press forward, back, forward, and then kick. It is also invincible though, so there are uses for this move. Since the move is invincible and it travels full screen, you can use it like this. So I had the advantage that I knew it was coming. It's a little bit harder to do that in a match than you would think, but you could use it to go through projectiles from full screen, similar to your EX headbutt. And then last is the level three. So this is basically a combo tool. It has invincibility as well, but I basically use this just to close rounds. So all those moves out the way, let's talk about how you actually play the character. So the neutral game is pretty simple. It's going to be a lot about using headbutt. So where Ryu is doing a lot of like fireball for control and trying to get here to his ideal range to kind of vary what he does and try to use like a crouching medium kick to pull up on you. For Honda, he is the fireball. So the headbutt is essentially, you could think of it like a fireball. Like he is a projectile that he can be hit and stuff. It is really safe on block and you get pushed to a range where you cannot be punished. So you see here, heavy headbutt. I'm nice and far, it's minus four, but I'm nice and far. And depending on what your opponent does after you block it, you can pick you can pick like different options to keep up your offense. So the standard one would be to do this. So you would do headbutt twice if they choose to not do anything. If they press a button, they should be able to counter you, but they need to press the right one. So what do you do if someone chooses to press a button after you do headbutt? I can't walk away in this case because his button is too long. So what do you do? You could do nothing and just take it. Usually it depends on the character, what they do, if they have something they could reach you. But if they have to use something that's kind of unsafe, like a sweep, that's a win for you overall. If you want to really get them to not do things, you can use the EX headbutt to armor them. This will make them hesitate a little bit and start picking different options like walk up block or jump or something like that. So in some cases where people have fireballs, if you do this, you get counter hit. But if you use the clap, you can counter hit them. And if you have the power up, you can even get 
a follow up there, which is really nice. If you don't know what they're going to do, you can just wait and that's fine. Why is it okay for you to wait though? So the main thing is if they block this headbutt, they lose a whole drive gauge. So it's quite a bit compared to other moves. Like here it's full again. My medium punch takes away like half. And then my heavy punch also still doesn't take a whole bar. Roundhouse does take a whole bar, but this one does. So in the case that they take like two of these, they really can't block this move. Basically this move forces them to do other stuff. So what if they start doing system mechanics? So what if they start doing things like parry and things like that? So if they do parry, you have like two main options you can do, uh, technically three, but I usually think of it as two, where I would make the light headbutt with on purpose so that they're sitting there vulnerable, or you can run at them with drive rush. If they're reacting to you just coming at them with parry, then that means that they're not actually reacting to what moves you're doing, which means you can throw them or wait for the parry and just let their drive gauge empty some and then punish them and start your offense. If you find yourself getting zoned a lot by like fireballs and stuff, fireball is actually pretty decent against them, but you can use system mechanics against them or you could use the jumping neutral fierce to slowly drift your way over to them. And finally, you could use EX headbutt, but this is a little bit harder because it's hard to do on reaction. Your other option would be to use the sumo slam. You can see this to go really, really, really far. And if you get a punish counter on something, you will get a combo, which is really, really, really useful. The thing is though, it's not projectile involved, so you do have to preempt it a little bit. You see, I'm gonna hit here where my EX headbutt, I could do it a little bit later. The, the sumo slam, I gotta kind of know your projectile is coming. The nice thing though, is that it has a hitbox on the way up and the way down. So if you catch somebody in the air, you can also get them too. So here's an example here. And also you gotta keep in mind that people will use jump to try to beat your headbutt. So your sumo slam will beat that no problem. The EX version of the sumo slam has uh, invincibility against jump attacks. So if you really wanna make sure you hit somebody jumping, this is the move you wanna use. So then we gotta talk about closing the gap. So one thing about Honda is that these are all considered jump attacks. So the opponent can choose to use invincible move like a dragon punch or something to beat your headbutt. So the easiest time for them to deal a headbutt is when you're here. Once you're around here, it becomes much, much more difficult to deal with headbutt because it's hard to react. And the really nice thing is that a lot of system mechanics lose to headbutt if they're trying to do it on reaction. They have to do things preemptively in order to stop your headbutt if you're at this range. So right now I'm going to do the drive impact practice. So this is just to show off like how good headbutt and sumo slam are against this system mechanic because a lot of people like using drive impact as an answer to stuff. It makes it so that you have to hesitate a little bit more. You can't like autopilot your options really. But a nice thing is that Honda just doing his special moves, as long as they don't preempt it like early, you should be able to counter DI or get away from it. So I'll use Sumo Slam and Headbutt. So first let's do Sumo Slam. So Sumo Slam, what will happen is, usually the driving back will go the wrong way when it comes up, where Headbutt is a little bit different because you're interacting with it directly. So, this is an example of a preemptive one where it actually wins, where here would be an example of not a preemptive one. So it's going to be really important to get used to reacting to the drive impact with your own. And basically, like any time you connect headbutt with the opponent uh, and you see drive impact happen, you should press drive impact yourself just in case Because again, if the if the opponent doesn't do it preemptively, this is just a computer recording, so they're going to do it at the same timing no matter what. But in a match, some people really try to react at this range, which they just cannot really do. So in the end, you're gonna find people doing a couple of main things. They're either going to really preempt their drive impact, they're going to parry, which is probably the safest option, 
or they'll try to stay at a range where they know they can react so it will be close to full screen and if they have some type of invincible move like a dragon punch or something they'll use that against your headbutt if not they'll just try to parry or something once someone shows you they're good at dealing with the headbutt game here you're going to want to try to get here into the mid-range game so this is where you will need to know like the strength of your button so where to use forward heavy kick standing medium punch standing heavy punch and standing jab and crouching jab in the mid-range his most important buttons i would say would be standing jab standing medium punch standing heavy punch forward heavy kick and drive rush drive rush in that it's like headbutt so you have headbutt straight up which puts you in a guessing game but it's a favorable one but if they're sitting here trying to get ready for your headbutt and this is not quite in the oh let's play the mid-range game where we're moving back and forth and seeing who's going to win with buttons then using drive rush to approach is a really good similar option which means they would have to look for then Headbutt, sumo slam, you walking up, drive rush, and drive impact. It's actually quite a lot the opponent has to look for against him, which makes it pretty hard to play against him at that range. So next we're going to talk about offense. His offense is pretty straightforward. We already talked about the headbutt minigame, so that's like a big part of it. So this button is plus, so it's really, really easy to structure offense based off it. The main things you'll be doing is standing medium punch into crouching jump, standing medium punch into the down forward heavy kick, standing medium punch into standing medium punch, and if you hit like a kind of far stand medium punch, you can do stand medium punch into stand heavy punch. So let's talk about what each option does. So this is your basic frame trap. If I hit this properly, then Ryu should not be able to mash out on me, and he gets a combo off this. If you think they're not going to press right away, you could mix in his down forward heavy kick. So one is just a quick overhead, which is nice. But again, you have the car cancel option. So you have the this option there as well. This resets the situation. Doing the heavy punch at the right range will make it so that you hit buttons counter hit. So this button is not like fast, fast. I mean, it's eight frames. So it's like pretty fast, but there's a seven frame gap here, right? So the the they have space to counterattack me normally. The reason why it works is just because of the space I'm doing it at, which is around here. Once you make them respect you here too and respect you here, you can also start adding EX sumo steps. So this is this move, if you remember from before. So you could do this at the EX sumo steps. And when you do this, you're plus two, so and you're right in their face. So you can mix either doing this, which would lead to a combo, or you can throw them or command grab them. When you do drive rush, you get the same type of guessing game. So if you do this, so you're plus two. So when you do this, it's really just the same guessing game as doing EX sumo steps, but it costs less resource. One really nice thing about this character is that he gets to do command grab character mix ups for less drive meter, which is pretty nice. So if you play like Manon or something, you would know they're like, they were like poking and trying to buffer into drive rush cancel, which costs half your drive gauge. And the mix up is strong, it's just really expensive. Where because of the threat of this, you can show either like raw sumo steps or you can just pull up with the button of your choice, uh, either this or this, and then mix them up from there and you use way less resource, which is nice. Keep in mind that when the opponent is in burnout, everything you do has four frames more advantage, which means that your hands are zero now, your headbutt is zero now, so even your EX hands become plus now. You get access to offense you wouldn't normally have. For defensive situations, I don't think he really has anything special really besides just remember that his EX headbutt has armor. That means it's also really hard to safe jump compared to a normal dragon punch. From what I've seen on Twitter, people talking on Twitter, uh, you need to use a jumping light kick to safe jump this move. So just keep that in mind that it's hard to deal with on knockdown. And this is like his main unique option besides typical system stuff like pressing a four frame button or delaying the throw tech or anything like that that you would see in the tutorial. All right, now we end up with combos. So Honda combo. So he really only has a couple of types of combos. Uh, this is unlike like an anime game, <laughs> you know, like it's not often you get big combos. So the first combo you should learn is two jams into medium headbutt. So this would require you to hold down back just instead of down so that you could charge the headbutt. 
this one is pretty important. Like, it really, really is pretty important. And if you think I'm trolling, even that uh, offensive sequence I showed before, standing medium punch, this combo. So it's a, it's a pretty important combo to know. Your main, like, oh, this is my punish combo will involve your standing heavy kick. So it's going to be standing heavy kick into sumo steps. And sumo steps has a different follow-up where you press down and, and punch, and it will launch, which looks like this. It's also important to know that this combo is only on the first hit. So when you do this, you can end in a bunch of different ways. You can end sumo slam. You can end in headbutt. You can add in hands. You can do immediate supers if you want. And like I said, you use this in a lot of situations. This is basically your main go-to punish combo where like something happened so you get you see an opportunity to get a big combo. So for example. So in that case, since I got a counter drive impact, I went into my standing heavy kick, sumo steps, launch, butt slam. Side note, butt slam is gonna be Probably the main one you use mid screen because unlike headbutt, the butt slam knocks him down right next to you. So headbutt, I would send them over here, but then sumo slam, I'll be right in front of them in order to continue my offense. In the corner, I don't think it really matters, but I haven't like super explored guaranteed knockdown setups. I just kind of knocked him down, stand in front of them, and either pick stand medium punch, throw, or wait. <clears throat> this thing even applies to when you're countering zoning with Sumo Slam, so Ryu doesn't want none of this action. So you can see why this is such an important combo part. You basically use it anytime you get a big opportunity. Then the last thing for this video to talk about would be his cash out combo. So what I mean is to win rounds, uh, uh, what I've seen a lot of people do is use the entirety of their drive gauge and burn themselves out on purpose using a long combo. So he has that too, and thankfully it's a relatively simple combo. So I'll use an example here with standing medium munch as we've been using it a lot, but there's technically two. Um, this one is the easier of the two, I would say. So that was an example in a punish situation. So it's basically the same combo you saw before with the heavy kick into the launch, but instead of going right into it, we loop it a couple times using the two hits of the heavy kick instead of the one. Then there's another example that can come from like straight jabs. So This is the same type of idea, but from jabs, so it's a little faster, so it's a little bit trickier, but just to show that you can spend all your resource the same way. So that's Honda, basically. So he's a pretty simple character, I want to say, a uh, slow-paced character. Uh, I like him because it lets me play defense, which is nice, and the headbutts really help because they, they really just do everything. Like, you anti-air people with it, you poke people with it, you pressure people with it. It just, it just kind of does everything. As usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks to all supporters on Patreon, by the way. We have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash lordnight. Shout out to everyone who's watching the podcast. We do one every Tuesday with, uh, it seems like it's guests every week at this point. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.